Well, hello, welcome to our second flip video on the conic sections. This time we're going to focus on parabolas, but I thought we might spend a little bit of time at the beginning looking at exactly what the conic sections are. So you see here we have um, two cones, uh, a cone as you saw it in geometry, an inverted mirror image cone. And if you slice that cone with a plane that is parallel to the base of the, the cone, you get this orange shape, which is a circle. And that's what we have right here, slicing at an angle parallel to the, the base. And we spent some time on our last lesson studying about circles. Now, if that cone is tilted and is not parallel to the base, or, or that plane is tilted, then you get an ellipse. You see how it's elongated. And uh, I think a lot of you grew up calling this an oval. We've talked about that in class. It's not an oval, but it's an ellipse. It has two lines of symmetry. Now, if you tilt that plane enough so it does slice through uh, the, the base, one of the bases there, you get a parabola. And you can see the parabola there that you studied a lot in Algebra 2, and we're going to actually take a look at today. And if your plane is tilted enough so that it goes through both cones, um, then you get a hyperbola, which is a lot different than a parabola. So, uh, again, if we take a look at those slices, we get a circle. If it's parallel to the base, we get an ellipse, we get a parabola, and we get a hyperbola. And this is where you can actually see each of those slices embedded in one another. It's kind of an interesting look. But today's focus is all about parabolas. So, uh, let's define a parabola geometrically, not algebraically as a quadratic, but geometrically. So our geometric definition of a parabola is it's a set of all points, x, y, in a plane, just meaning it's flat, that are equidistant. And that means the same distance from a fixed line, and that's this green line down here, and that's called the directrix, and a fixed point, and that fixed point is this red point right here, and that's called the focus that's not on the line. So again, this red point is the focus, this green line is the directrix. And the parabola in this picture is this black shape right here. And every single point on that parabola is the same distance from the red as it is from the green. Now, there are some other important parts of a parabola that I want to give names to. We call this line right down the middle that goes through the focus and is perpendicular to the directrix. We call that the axis of symmetry. You already knew that. We call this point right here, which is the very uh, minimum of a parabola, or if that parabola is flipped, I guess it would be the maximum. We call that the vertex. And then we call this segment, this segment that is parallel to the directrix, so it's perpendicular to the axis of symmetry, and it passes through the focus. We call that the lattice rectum. Lattice meaning side, rectum meaning straight. So this goes straight from side to side through the focus. And that lattice rectum is actually very important to us in determining the equation of a parabola geometrically. So let's talk about parabolas real quickly here. So basically what, what we know about parabolas is the distance, the distance a parabola, uh, sorry, the distance from the focus to the parabola is the exact same as from that parabola down to the directrix. So those two dotted lines there are the same. So when I go here, the distance from the, the focus to this point on the parabola is the exact same as the distance from the parabola down to the directrix. Every single point on the parabola is equidistant from the focus and the directrix the same distance, every single point. So if I go way up here, the distance between this point and that focus is the exact same as the distance between that point and the directrix, every single time. So what do we know about parabolas that are, that are neat? Well, let's, let's take a look here at this parabola. One of the uh, qualities or characteristics of a parabola is any time you have a, um, let me pick a color here, uh, a ray that's coming into the parabola that is parallel, 
to the axis of symmetry or perpendicular to the directrix, it will hit that parabola and will reflect straight to the focus. So any ray coming into this parabola here that hits the side of the parabola will be reflected right to that focus. So anytime you have a ray that's coming in to the parabola that's perpendicular to the directrix, it will reflect off the side of the parabola and go right to the focus. You see why we call that a focus? You see how it focuses these rays? Huh? You see that? That's pretty cool. So any, any ray coming in here that's perpendicular to the directrix, that's parallel to the axis of symmetry, will reflect directly, directly to that focus. So what's that mean for us in the real world? Well, what that means in the real world is Let's take a look at flashlights. So flashlights, the mirror um, reflective device in a flashlight is a three-dimensional parabola called a paraboloid. And so what happens here is the light source is right here at the focus and lights come out of that, uh, rays of light come out of that focus. They hit the wall of the parabola and they come up in this parallel style here. And so when you shine a flashlight on a, a wall, you generally get two circles. This first circle, those are the set of all these focused beams that are coming off the, the light source and are be re being reflected in a parallel fashion. And that's what the inner circle is. The outer lighter circle, those are simply just beams of light that are coming, uh, coming from the light source and aren't touching the side of the parabola here and are just escaping outside. And so that's, that's not as concentrated, so that's why it's a lighter surface. As a matter of fact, uh, if you reverse the process and you have a paraboloid mirror, a re paraboloid reflector, what happens here is all these light sources, these rays of light come into the paraboloid, hit the wall, and are focused right there at the focus. And what you see here is the lighting of the Olympic torch. So if she can take that torch and get it right at the focus of this parabola, it will catch on fire. And let me, let me show you how powerful this really can be. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Whoops. No. All right, well, what just happened there? Well, what, what that was, was that was some YouTube channel where, where some guy, I think he was living by the Tiger King, created his own parabolic mirror. And you'll notice that when he took that, that, that log and held it right at the focal point of that mirror, it ignited the log on fire. It, it's hot enough. It, it focused, look at this, it focused all those sun rays into one spot, and it was hot, hot enough to light... Uh, the log on fire. Throughout the video, he lights different things on fire. I think he's enjoying it a bit too much, but he lights, a, uh, puts holes in a, a, a can. Um, he, he burns concrete. It's very powerful. Now, the light around the edge of the parabolic mirror, it's not very hot out there because, you know, you just have a couple beams of, of sunlight coming in, but the closer you get to that, that focus, the, the more damage it does. So, Let's see if we can now talk a, a little bit about how uh, we can make a parabola using our patty paper. So I gave you some patty paper before, before we left school, and I'd like to see if we can figure out how we can fold uh, a piece of patty paper. So let's see what we've got here.
Okay, so what I need you to do is I need you to take your patty pan that I gave you, and I need you to mark about an inch up from, from the bottom edge uh, a point, and that point is going to be our focus. And then this point, this line, this edge down here is our direction. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold a parabola by folding in all the lines in tangent to the parabola. So here's what you do. You take your patty paper, you fold the directives up so it lands right on the focus, and you make a sharp crease right along that fold. And then you fold it again so the directives comes up and touches that focus, and you make a sharp crease. And you keep folding so every point on the directive that this time lands on the focus and you make a sharp crease. So maybe you kind of just walk that directives around so different points land on the focus. And you keep going around both sides, both sides, don't just do both sides, until eventually you get that. And look at that right there. Look at that. Look at this parabola we get right here, formed by all these tangent lines. And that is how you fold a parabola. Well, that was really amazing. And I would encourage you to do that yourself. And you might try uh, putting the, the focus uh, different distances from the directrix. Maybe you move it a little closer and see what that does to your parabola. Does it make the parabola fatter or does it make it thinner? Try putting the focus. Uh, an inch and a half or two inches from the directrix and see what happens. But that's that's basically how you fold a parabola. Now, part two of this, this video is, hmm, wait to see what Vihart says, but part two of this video deals with how we take the geometry of a parabola and tie it into the algebra you learned last year. And your textbook has, has a whole section on this. It's very confusing. Look at this is just a page from your textbook. See how it divides it all up. It's awful, awful. But we have better ways of handling that. So I'm going to uh, release part two as well. It's not quite as long, but it has some actual problems that we're going to work. So stay tuned for part two.